Well, good morning. We are the most successful multicultural society in the world. We are an immigration nation. We've been built by millions of people who've come here from every corner of the world. We are as old as our first Australians, as young as the baby in the migrant mother's arms. We're as old as people, the oldest hu continuous human cultures of our first Australians and as young as that new migrant. So we're a remarkable nation. Our multicultural society is an example to the world. And at its foundation is Australian citizenship. There is no more important title in our democracy than Australian citizen. And Australian citizenship, the Australian citizen, that institution must reflect Australian values. We are an extraordinary nation. You know, we're not defined by race or religion or culture, as many other nations are. We're defined by commitment to common values, political values, the rule of law, democracy, freedom, mutual respect, equality for men and women. These fundamental values are what make us Australian. So when you look in the mirror, when an Australian can look like a person from any race, any background in the world, but what we share are those values and our citizenship process should reflect that. So today we are announcing changes to strengthen citizenship, to make for a stronger Australia, stronger citizenship, stronger citizens. The minister will go through the detail, but the headline points are these. You will need to be a permanent resident for four years. So that means a longer time in Australia as a permanent resident before you apply to be a citizen. You'll need to have competent English. That is a vital requirement, not a requirement at the moment, but we all know that the key to successful integration into the Australian community, to economic success, and every success, social success, in, uh, in becoming part of the community is being able to speak English. So that's, that is a, that's a very important change. And also we need to ensure that our citizenship test enables applicants to demonstrate how they have integrated into and engaged with our Australian community so that they're part of the community. They've lived here as a permanent resident for four years, they speak English, share our values, be integrated. That, those are critically important elements. I believe that they will be empowering for applicants. This will be good for the applicants, good for the nation, underlining our Australian values at the very heart of Australian citizenship. Australian citizenship is the foundation of our democracy. Now, I'll ask the minister to go through these changes in further detail, every single one of which will enable us to be even stronger, an even stronger and more successful multicultural society than we are today. Well, Prime Minister, uh, thanks very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to go through a little bit of detail, but uh, and I'm happy to answer questions uh, from there, but you've seen this morning some of the detail that, uh, that's been released. I, I want to emphasise the fact that this really is about asking people who come to our country seeking Australian citizenship not to abandon their heritage or their culture or their background, but to honour and respect that as many migrant communities do right across the country right now. I was in Wagga Wagga yesterday with the Yazidi community, amazing people, wonderful people, and they have a story to tell uh, like few others. And it is a horrific story, but they have called Australia home and their embrace of their children yesterday and the way in which they have adopted Australian values at the same time as they respect their heritage and culture is a great credit to them and to many migrants that have come before them. But when you decide to come to our country, you decide to abide by Australian laws. You decide in your application when you want to become an Australian citizen that you will adopt Australian values. And we are very clear about saying that today in the announcement because we are making no apologies for the fact uh, that we do want people to be able to integrate. We want people to be able to send their kids to school to take advantage of a great education system. We want people to be able to work if they're of working age 
and to make sure that if they have a capacity to work, they're contributing and not leading a life on welfare. So there are many aspects uh, to that, but I'll just go through in a little bit more detail. So as the Prime Minister pointed out, the residency requirement uh, at the moment is effectively 12 months, and that increases to four years. Uh, the idea of that is uh, for uh, the demonstration of uh, integration, of the ability to uh, improve English language, to make sure that people uh, can then demonstrate that they have been working if they're of working age with the capacity to work, uh, demonstrate that they haven't been perpetrators of uh, domestic violence or whatever the case uh, might be uh, in relation to uh, the particular test. So the first point is the residency requirement changes. There's a significant change in relation to the English language requirement, which at the moment uh, is basic. Uh, we increase that uh, to uh, IELTS level six equivalent. Uh, so that uh, is at a competent English uh, language proficiency level, and I think uh, there would be wide support for that as well. Uh, there is also the issue around Australian values uh, and integration, which uh, I alluded to a second ago. Uh, there will be further tests, further questions placed uh, in the test uh, as it currently operates, um, and there will be the opportunity for people to comment uh, on some of these changes uh, over the course of uh, the next, uh, over the course of uh, the period between now and the 1st of June. Uh, so we will consult around the questions around the values issues uh, and we can provide uh, further detail. There is also change to be made to, uh, to the pledge and um, again we'll, consult, uh, we'll consult on that uh, particular issue as well. So I'll leave it there. How do you test someone's values? How do you judge someone's values in a test? Don't, aren't you just testing whether they know some information or not? You can't really judge someone's values. Like well, that, at the then. moment there's a multiple choice test uh, which uh, is essentially a civics test that asks questions mm -hmm. of people. Uh, what we're saying is that we want people to demonstrate the fact that uh, they have, if they're of working age, that they have worked uh, over that period of four years, uh, that they have sent their children to school. Uh, we would ask questions, for example, as we're seeing in Melbourne at the moment, if kids are roaming the street at night uh, as part of gangs in uh, the Apex gangs or elsewhere in cities like Melbourne, uh, whether or not uh, uh, that is adopting an Australian value. Clearly, it's not. No, it's not. As a parent to no, send your children to school, and no, the it's pledge, not. You, you pledge to abide by Australian laws. No, it's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not an issue um, that's properly tested now, um, and there's no question about that. And I think it's. And I think it, I'll just. I'll just answer this. And I think there's a deficiency uh, in the way in which uh, it's applied now. So that's the uh, principle. For example, domestic violence, a perpetrator of domestic violence. My view is that that person shouldn't become an Australian citizen. Uh, and we can ask that question, but we can also uh, undertake uh, our own uh, checks in relation to uh, police checks or whatever the case might be. So uh, that's how you can adopt, uh, well, how you can apply the, the test. Police checks don't happen now? No. Checks to, of criminal backgrounds? There, so, there are, there so are some the checks that are undertaken at the moment, but they're clearly insufficient. If we are, Prime Minister, the most successful multicultural society in the world, as you often said, you said this morning. Why do we need this and why now? Well, we, what, what we're doing is strengthening our multicultural society and strengthening, strengthening the commitment to Australian values. This is about strengthening the Australian values which are at the heart of citizenship, of being an Australian citizen. Australian citizenship should be honoured, cherished. It is a privilege. And when people apply to be Australian citizens, they honour us, of course, because they're offering to join our Australian family. But equally, it's important that they understand that they are making a commitment to our Australian values. And the points that Peter makes are, are absolutely correct in terms of demonstrating that they are integrated, that they have engaged with the Australian community, people who have lived here for four years, obviously, as permanent residents, have had plenty of opportunity to do that. So I would like to see, as we, and we will, we are, we have a discussion paper out, and so we're seeking views on this part of the process, but I would expect applicants to be able to say, talk about their engagement with the community, perhaps their involvement in a community organisation, with a school, if they've got their parent, that they're sending their kids to school, to demonstrate uh, that they share the same views about uh, the equality of men and women, respect for, for women and children, 
These are very, these are fundamentally important Australian values, and we look. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't sort of back away in some, as 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 the Labor Party will no doubt do. The Labor Party will always rush off into the realm of their own political correctness, and they'll, you know, they'll be complaining about this. The fact is that it is these values. The, they are essentially political values, not party political values, but these political values are what bind us together. That's what keeps us together in the midst of our diversity, and our citizenship should reinforce that and celebrate that and honour it. That is what this is about. It's about commitment to Australia, Australian values, honouring them, prioritising them, because that, what, that is what makes us the extraordinary nation we are. Yes, you mentioned some Australian so values at the a, outset, bit, and you see it, this nebulous, is often a contested so, field. Sorry. sorry. Yes, sorry. Well, you, yeah, yeah, Mark, bit, Mark and then Chris. Though, isn't it that um, these values aren't really enforceable outside of the law? So if someone passes a test and says, tick, yes, I don't beat my wife, um, tick, I know who Don Bradman is, I'm an Australian citizen, and then they don't express Australian values, what happens? Well, the, that is why it's important to for the process to enable people to demonstrate that, and a big part of that is engagement with the community. The fact that they're sending, if they say, if they're a parent, they're sending their kids to school, their kids are going to school. The fact that they don't have a record of, for it, you've, you've mentioned uh, family violence, you've, they don't have a record of family violence. Uh, this is going. This is this will put a greater onus on the applicant. You see, there's been. Look, I I don't want to. I, I, I'm not. The process we've had for applying to be an Australian citizen has been, has been fairly consistent over a long period of time, and it has been essentially an administrative process. Right? And the test has been, as Peter said, the test is basically a civics test. I mean, I don't know if any of you have done it or, or looked at it, but you'll see it's basically a civics test. You see how you go in it as political journalists. But the, but the point, what it doesn't go to, or doesn't go to sufficiently, are those questions of values and, and at the heart, at the very heart of our success is mutual respect. Respect of each other, respect of people of different faiths and different cultures and respect of women and children. That is, at the, you, know, the, you know, as, I, as I, you've often heard me say this, you know, uh, not all disrespecting women Disrespecting women ends up in violence against women, but that's where all violence against women begins. So this is a this this is a very important, a very important Australian value: respect, mutual respect, respect for women and children, and that is got that is going to be that is a key Australian value. Who would argue with that? Is it reflected in our current process? No, it's not. It should be. Values are often a contested, such as female genital mutilation, uh, child, you know, forcing children to marriage and marry and what have you, how they're being or could be included in values questions when they're already illegal under Australian law. Like, what's the need for a values question when it's illegal under Australian's law? Australian well, law? It is, it, it's, it's because it's important to reinforce our values. You see, are you proud of our Australian values? Are you a proud Australian? Well, you should stand up for it. You should stand up for those values, and that's what we're doing. You see, if we believe that respect for women it, and respect for women and children and saying no to violence against women and children, if we believe that that is an Australian value, and it is, and every one of you does believe that, then why should that not be made a key part, a fundamental part, a very prominent part of our process to be an Australian citizen? Why should the test simply be a checklist of civic questions, all very important, about the parliament and how many senators there are from each state. These are all very important things to know, no doubt. But fundamentally, the values which bind us together are those ones of respect, the rule of law, commitment to freedom, democracy. These are key elements in our Australian identity, and our citizenship should reflect this. And I mean, the proposition that uh, the, I've, I've already heard people from the Labor Party criticising the proposition that you should have competent English. Really? Are they serious? I mean, does anybody doubt that if you want to succeed, if you want to even have a chance of succeeding in Australia, 
you need to be able to speak English. It is the single best thing any person coming to this country can do is learn English, and that's why Peter's department put such a big effort into it. Well, that is going to be a requirement. You know what that'll do? That will ensure that many people who had not learned English or had not been encouraged to learn English will do so. And so you know what we're doing? We're doing them a big favour. Do you understand that the, the values are a contested area inside Australia, or often by our Well, the ones academic... I've described are not. But could you then <laughs> articulate, be. from the baseline, you've mentioned a few of them in, in past, yeah. but could you give us a summary? Start, you were talking about parliamentary democracy, the rule of secular law, you talk about equality of sexes. Could you give a summary of those things that you believe all Australians should sign up to? Well, what we will, what we will yeah, the answer is, the answer is yes, uh, but the the discussion paper that Peter's department has released is going to engage public discussion on this, as indeed Phil Ruddock and Connie Ferravanti-Wells' uh, work did uh, a little while ago, uh, and that's been a valuable part of that too. But I think it is a, I think we understand, we, we, you know, the Australians, uh, have, Austra Australians have an enormous reservoir of good sense, and we know that our values of mutual respect, of equality of men and women, democracy, freedom, rule of law, those values are fair go. They are fundamental Australian values. And, in, and what we need to ensure, they're not shared by every, you know, in every part of the world, that's true, but they're, but they're shared by us. And we are entitled to say, if you want to be a citizen of Australia, there are a few things that we want you to demonstrate that you share commitment to our values, allegiance to our country, competent English, being here for four years, integration, demonstrating that you've made that commitment, that this is not just an administrative process of achieving some you know, particular qualification. This is not about administration. This is about allegiance and commitment to Australian values. Yeah. On the change to the 456 yeah. visa scheme, yeah. um, we was going to have uh, stricter um, labour market testing. Mm. Are those standards going to be retrofitted to the Chinese Free Trade Agreement, for, or is that going to remain exempt from the new standards? And on your competency of English, <coughs> what do you say to migrants who came here who couldn't speak English when they arrived but ended up becoming quite successful? Well, well, and, well for dealing with, I'll, I'll deal with the second one, then uh, Peter can deal with the labour market testing. Um, of course, a lot of migrants have come here in, in, without, uh, in the past without uh, strong English skills, but of course they've acquired those English skills. You know that's the whole point. So the so the the level of English under the new temporary skills visa is higher than it was, uh, than it has been under four five sevens. We've increased that. With it's, it is vastly. It, it, that, that is a you know, vast improvement, a very important improvement. But to be a citizen of Australia, requiring people to have competent English is, you know, it, it, look, I think, you know, you know what, I reckon if you went out today and said to Australians, do you think you could become an Australian citizen without being able to speak English? They'd say, you're kidding, surely you'd have to be able to speak English. Most people will be surprised that this has not been the law for years. And it is, it's fundamental. So I think this is, this, this is a win-win, a win for Australia and actually a really big win for the applicants because it gives the incentive to acquire a skill that is vital to success. Peter? Uh, so just on, uh, just on the 457 uh, labour market testing, so under Labor's 457 program there uh, were essentially there was, there was no testing. Um, the uh, exemptions uh, existed and we abolished that obviously. Uh, we said yesterday that there'll be mandatory testing both in relation to the short term and the long term stream, uh, but there will be adherence with our free trade agreement. So uh, that's, uh, that's a statement of the obvious. Now, I see some figures from Labor which try and conflate uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, India free trade agreement, free trade agreement with the UK and others to try and boost up their dodgy no numbers. Free trade there, well, this is, this is the point that seems to escape Mr. Shorten. So, so we adhere to we adhere to the conditions of any free trade agreement or any Australian law, of course. Uh, but we have mandated uh, the labour market testing, which is a basic requirement. We want employers to find an Australian worker to put in that Australian job, and if they can't, after having demonstrated uh, uh, the conditions, then 
they can employ uh, a foreign worker, worker on a temporary basis. If, if somebody assaults their partner in private, why would you expect them to admit it in a citizenship test? And how do you stop people being coached to simply give the right answers? Well, I, I'll, I'll let Peter and I can both answer that. The, clearly, uh, the, the, there has to be, a, a, obviously, there'll be a, a test. Uh, and you're right, somebody could answer a test uh, incorrectly. But, uh, or falsely, uh, but if there have been, but where there's been criminal activity, that is something that the, or reports of that, or evidence of that, that is something that the department will have regard to. So this is, this is a, well, if somebody has committed, you, you can be, it, it, uh, if somebody has committed a crime, if there's been an AVO out against them, for example, if there's been evidence of domestic violence, then they can't deny that evidence exists. So that is going. That will be a relevant factor. Don't tell the police. Why are they going to tell you? Uh, the, the, uh, what I'm saying to you is, if there is evidence of criminal activity, if there's been an AVO, for example, if there's been a prosecution, then that is something that the uh, government will be aware of. But Peter, do you want to elaborate well, well, on people, that? People, people will lie. I mean, they lie now. Uh, in relation to uh, citizenship tests, in relation to laws that exist now. That, that is not an argument for us to do nothing in this space. Domestic violence is a significant issue in this country uh, and we shouldn't tolerate one instance of it. Mm. And the fact that somebody might uh, fudge an answer on a test or an application uh, is no argument against us asking people, if you want to become an Australian citizen, abide by our laws and our norms, we don't accept violence against women. And there is a lot of work that the federal government has done and the state governments have done, and it's a bipartisan approach to stamping out domestic violence. And that work continues today, and it will continue forever. Because human beings will be human beings. If we know that people are lying, there are consequences for that already under the Citizenship Act. So if somebody lies in an application, if they are fraudulent in their application for Australian citizenship, then there is an existing power under the Act in certain circumstances to revoke that citizenship. Just have one more. take effect from today. When do you anticipate uh, these uh, laws to change these uh, Citizenship Act will come to the Parliament? Well, we'll be briefing the opposition and the crossbench about it today, Peter, or as soon as possible. Subject to their availability. Subject to their availability. Uh, this is, this is uh, we, uh, we look to the, uh, to the opposition uh, to support this legislation, uh, this is in, uh, th this is re this is defending, reinforcing Australian values. Now, we're all, what we've talked about this morning are values that we all agree with. No one suggested that they're wrong or mistaken. Uh, we all agree with them. We're standing up for Australian values, and the Parliament should do so too. They don't respect Australian values. Is that what you're is that what you're saying, Peter? What, what I'm saying is that we should, if we believe in our nation's values, and we do, then why should we not require citizens to make a commitment to those values? It's a question of whether you believe, you really believe, in the values that have made Australia the remarkable nation that it is. Now, we do. We believe Australians do. We believe the community does. So this is a time, this is an opportunity to stand up for Australian values, to put them at the very heart of the most important position in our democracy, the most important title, Australian citizen. Thanks very much. Can you please help say Tony Abbott's speech?